What's up guys, Sam from Forward Progress Madden. And have you ever heard the phrase, better late than never? Well, of course, that's a rhetorical question. Of course, you've heard it. But in this video, I'm gonna bring you a tip that you're gonna be able to use for the rest of this year, into next year, and let's just be real, streaks and user catching and things of those nature in which DBs become unresponsive is always gonna be a problem, or there's always gonna be a way to do it, rather. And I'm gonna give you the tools that you probably didn't know were right in front of your eyes and they're not even play dependent to stop face throws, rocket catches, streaks, whatever you wanna call them. Now, the way I figured this out was, was one of two things. I was thinking, you know, what is it that causes fumbles? Because there are certain players that on the, have the game or rather are on the game that have really really high hit power ratings but it doesn't seem like they ever cause fumbles well come to find out it's not really the hit power trait or I'm sorry it's not really the hit power rating it's more so the hit power trait so when we talk about hit power right we're talking about guys like Cam Chancellor and if you take a look by hitting the traits something that is like really really overlooked the big hitter trait you see he's got a yes for a big hitter trait. You think of guys that force the most fumbles in Madden. Cam Chancellor is easily forcing the most fumbles in the game. Um, the same can be said about guys like, well, Dante Whitner, last year's Madden. Big hitter trait, of course. You know, it's not necessarily just the ratings because there are players that have, you know, lower hit power and let's say the low 80s, but have a big hitter trait and as a result, they force more fumbles. So I was thinking to myself, how can I get my DBs or the best DBs on the field to stop these face throws? And it kind of dawned on me. I wonder if these, these traits matter. And I started thinking of the best corners in the game. Richard Sherman, Rebus. You know, what do they have in common? Because Rebus plays face throws at 5'11", just like say Sherman does at six foot three but they both have you see this this trait plays ball in the air and both of them have aggressive for this trait now there are three different ratings or toggles I guess you could say for this trait you have aggressive you have balanced and you have conservative so let's think about guys in the game that are good rating solid ratings but everybody complains about them and how bad they are let's look the first one everybody comes in mind and I know you're already thinking about it before I get to him it's Byron Maxwell six foot one he's the counterpart to Sherman he's you know he's big guy he's fast enough why is he so terrible look he's got conservative one plus one starting to equal two all of a sudden okay so I took it a step further. I really wanted to think, you know, what other players in the game are ridiculously good? Like, don't throw them, don't don't throw at them, period. Well, Prince of Mukamara, he's six foot, zero, 93 speed. You know, he's got intangibles like jump and catch and, you know, things of that nature that are good. But he's also got the aggressive. Let's keep going. Who else can you not face throw on? Brandon Browner, aggressive. Uh, who else? Um, Pat Peterson, aggressive. Jimmy Smith, aggressive. You're starting to really kind of pick up on this. Now let's look at a guy like Desmond Trufant. He's also six foot. He's rated higher than Prince of Mukamara. He's got conservative. And I know from experience, having the Falcons in C4 earlier this year, Desmond Trufant is definitely not a guy you want out on an island so you're starting to really see that these guys or these traits rather affect whether or not these players are going to play the ball when it's in the air or not and also you know i had brandon flowers in c4 and i noticed that he played huge five nine but he's playing huge and i thought when i had him man he plays awful big now it makes sense and it's not just a ratings thing. I'll, I'll go ahead and flip the ratings on their head here. Worst worst DB in the game. 
rating wise, Al, Al Luis Jean. He's six foot one. He's got the aggressive trait. I'm a Bears fan. I know. I've used the Bears plenty. Al Luis Jean starts for me, and that is why. Because he can defend streaks. Now, if your opponent's not throwing streaks on you, he's throwing slants, whips, what I mean, whatever routes, posts, out routes. Yeah, of course, these guys are going to get burned. But when it comes to locking down 30 and 19, you know your opponent's face throwing you, you want aggressive traits on the field. So, let's look at some other gems that are in the game. I'm going to name a few for you. And it's all going to start to come clear for you. Remember this guy, Stanley Jean Baptiste? He's got aggressive. So he's the best DB on, in my opinion, he's one of the top five DBs in all of Madden because he's six foot three. He's got the aggressive trait. He's basically Richard Sherman. Let's look at some other players. For those of you who use the 49ers, everybody talks about the, the 49ers um, and everybody had their own setup for the 49ers. You looked at guys like Chris Culver, they're balanced. That means that sometimes they play it, sometimes they don't. Conservative means they're always going to try to tackle the player. Tremaine Brock, probably a guy that you have to start. I mean, they're not super tall, but he's got the aggressive trait. When I used the 49ers earlier this year, Tremaine Brock was on the outside for me. Parrish Cox, you look at him. He's got aggressive as well. He plays pretty decent. But everybody fell in love with this guy, Dante Johnson. He's got conservative. I never ever saw the reason to play Dante Johnson for that very reason. Yeah, he's six foot two, but he didn't play six foot two. I'll take the five foot ten guy with the aggressive trait over the six foot two guy with the conservative trait all day long because when that ball goes in the air, six foot two guy only wants to tackle the, the the receiver after he's caught the ball. You look at Chris Cook; he's balanced. Well, Chris Cook, I mean, it's pretty much how Madden plays. Chris Cook plays inconsistent. Sometimes he's playing the face throws; other times he's giving up the face throws. So it's all starting to kind of come clear now. And you're starting to see why the Giants have one of the best tandems in the game because they've got six foot, six foot two with both aggressive, much like the Cardinals have. With their six foot two, six foot one, both having aggressive. So yeah, there's no real play tip in this, but it's more so uh, conceptual. Um, it, you know, there's really no be all end all play. That stops face throwing. I mean, you've watched streams. I've watched streams. Guys throw face throws with reckless abandon. They'll throw them four times in a row because they know it only takes one. And you may get three stops in a row with that balanced DV who goes up maybe three times in a row, but there's still a chance he's not going to go up on that ball that fourth time. But I promise you, test it out for yourself if you don't believe me. If you put aggressive players on the field, they're going to go up and get that ball for you. They may not catch it, but they're going to break it up. So until next time, this is Zan. If you like this video, please take the time. Hit that, lump, that thumbs up. Give me a like. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. I'll be happy to respond, help you out in any capacity that I can. And I will see you guys next time.